Happy Sabbath, everybody, and welcome to our Early Teen Sabbath School. This morning, we will start with an opening prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, please bless us and help us all to learn from this lesson. And please put the words you want that you need for us to hear into our teacher's mouth and help us to have a good, restful Sabbath day. Amen. Thank you, Andrew, for the nice opening prayer. Now, Rebecca is going to say our memory verse for this week. This week's memory verse is Matthew 7, 5. Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Now it is time for our Bible lesson study. Good morning, happy Sabbath, and welcome to our Bible lesson today. Our memory verse is taken from Matthew chapter 7, but we're going to read verses that are around our memory verse, before and after. So how about you read Matthew verse 1, 2, and 3, Matthew 7, verse 1, 2, and 3, and you can read Matthew 7, verses 4 and 5, okay. all right? Sure. Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the blank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. All right. Is he talking literally about having a plank? Maybe a plank like this? No. A plank, can I put this inside your eye? No. No, it's pretty hard, right? So yeah. he is actually using what's called a metaphor, right? A metaphor. He is talking about something not literal, like a plank in the eye or a speck in the eye. Yes, we can have specks in our eyes, but it's hard to put a plank in our eye. But he's talking about something else. And we're going to talk about the meaning of that metaphor after um, we have a little illustration. The illustration is, well, like I said, this is the plank, and it's pretty hard for me to put it in your eye, right, Andrew? Yeah. So what I'm thinking is, I can use, let's just say, I will use this piece of cloth, this bandana. This is the representative of our plank, plank in the eye. Okay, if I put a plank in his eye, so it basically, the plank will close his eyes, right? This is a representative of a plank <laughs> okay and what's a speck a speck is a tiny little piece of a wood shaving or a piece of sawdust it's just as little as this but imagine that you have a little speck in his eye all right oops no, it, fell out. <laughs> it fell out okay we're gonna try again all right so can you see anything? Can you see a speck in his eye? Can you see? No, I can't see anything. You can't see anything, right? Because you have a plank in your eye. This little bandana represents a plank. So now I'm taking it off. And when you take it off, then you can probably see what's in his eye. Can you see it? Yeah. All right, the speck is real tiny. But when you have a big plank in your eyes, you can't see tiny things. Sometimes you can't even see big things, right? Mm -hmm. So this is what Jesus is talking about. If you have a plank, what does plank represent? Let's unfold big the metaphor. Hmm? Big things. Big things, like big what? What kind of big like things? Big He's talking Big sins. Big sins. Hmm. Is there such a thing as a small sin and a uh, big yeah. sin? Well, yeah. Well, I don't know. Like, if you do something like bad. Not bad, I don't know, bad, like you take somebody's chair or something, I don't know. <laughs> like you steal it, or, and then your friend just steals, like accidentally s steals, like, I don't know, just anything's like small, and uh -huh. then and you're like, oh, look what you did, and you're just like. Uh-huh, like, okay, so you accuse. But you're doing bigger than he is. Yeah, so you accuse mm -hmm. someone of doing something that you had done yourself before, yeah. right? It's just like saying, oh, st Stop staring or something, and you're staring yourself. Yeah, well, well staring like, yeah. is probably not that not bad. Staring, but, yeah. no, that's just, 
Okay, so when you do have something big, like that plank, a sin, right, in your, or something bad you're doing maybe, not some, no, you know that it's not mm -hmm. good, but you notice that someone else is doing something not quite right or not quite good, right? You can't even, you can't even see it, right? But this is what Jesus is talking about. How can you even see somebody else's small sin when you are doing big things yourself, right? You can't, mm -hmm. you should not even be able to see it. But somehow we see the little things in other people and don't see the big things inside of us, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you said, for example, um, somebody took a pencil from school and you said, oh, I've seen this pencil, you took it from the school, right? You have this pencil, but you yourself have taken several books from the school and haven't returned them. Would that be a good thing? No. no. So that would be noticing something in somebody else's life. But you have the same thing in your life. Or you have mm -hmm. different things maybe, but just as bad as somebody else's. Mm -hmm. Right? So the speck is every little misbehavior or things that maybe somebody doesn't approve or not a moral good thing that a person does or sin mm -hmm. and a plank is also something that someone else does right mm -hmm. um but it's more of a, a cum accumulation of bad things maybe and even even a bad one thing or two because sometimes when i look at specs when you press them together a little speck may be a little something you do a little here and a little there, and it doesn't seem to be as noticeable, right? But if you have a lot of those specks put together in a pile, hey, see, you can even make a, a bigger plank out of them. You can press them together. Some wood they press out of the mm -hmm. little pieces yeah. of wood, right? And actually, it can become pretty big and pretty long, too, right? If you put all the specks right next mm -hmm. to each other. This is the metaphor. So the, you can have an accumulation of little things and they can become a big plank in your eye. But you surely notice when someone else does something wrong, right? Yeah. Yes. We seem to be doing this a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Do you ever criticize your teachers and tell you if they're good or bad? Yes. Well, maybe, yeah, sometimes. Well, yeah, we talk about our teachers and their sometimes. faults and they're good. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people mm -hmm. criticize pastors or preachers. They come from church and they sit down at the dinner table and they start discussing <laughs> preachers. Mm -hmm. Well, but they don't even know themselves what it's like to get up and preach, you know, and be looked at by so many people, right? Or yeah. criticize Sabbath school teachers or school teachers or anyone. So is it good to, to do this? No. No, it's not good. Well, let's have another illustration right now. Hey, Andrew, you, you have a little smudge on your face. Oh, where? Right there. See oh. that? It, do, it doesn't look good at all. Oh, it looks... your whole face is just covered. Really? I, I can't see that. I, I, is it covered? Really? I... Yeah. That's just... Well, I can't see it. How... I guess it's covered, maybe. Hey, can I... L let me help you clean this speck. Sure, I, I can help you too. So just like in our illustration, have you told someone that they had a smudge on their face and um, found out that your face was really dirty? Have we done this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it seems like we have done this um, a lot of times, right? Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we just like to clean somebody else's life or their sins, right? And what they're doing wrong. But we're not willing to clean our own life. And Jesus says, in this way, we're hypocrites, right? In our lesson, it says, you hypocrites, right? First, remove your own plank. So remove bad things in your life and not criticize others, right? Mm -hmm. Well, how can we not criticize others? How can the critical spirit be? How can we work on... Is that something we can just say, this is it. I'm not going to do this anymore. Is this on our own willpower? No. 
You can ask God, though, to help you to overcome it. Right, you can ask God to help you overcome it. And what other steps can you take? How can we remove the critical spirit? Yes, the first thing would probably be to ask God to help you in that, right? Mm -hmm. Not to have a critical spirit about other people. Yes. Anything else do you think would be helpful in eliminating critical spirit in your life? Just think about someone that maybe you notice something in someone else your friends or teachers or siblings or what would you like how would it be useful to what would what would be good to do maybe like having yourself do good i don't know ah, maybe uh -huh. a little bit like removing the plank from your own eye so right. trying to do good bit. no matter what you notice in mm -hmm. other people Mm -hmm. Okay. And then they'll start doing good too. And they will start doing good because they see that you're not responding. Yeah. And you're not trying to defend and, yourself. And you're doing good yourself. So they'll think, oh, look at them. Mm hmm. Doing good is good, right? Or maybe mm -hmm. affirming someone. Yes. In a positive way, right? If you see that they missed a step or they did something that they should not have done. Mm hmm. Maybe instead of criticism, try to try to talk with them and understand why they're doing it, right? Mm -hmm. And talk with and maybe show show them a good way, not um, in the sense that showing them an example, but maybe um, helping them understand what was wrong and what they did, right? Just like talking with them. We're going to read a story now about how one person helped another person without criticizing him. Mm -hmm. One summer, a church art camp was held in the California mountains. A well-known Christian artist was the main speaker and his presentations were wonderful. But there was one problem. One of the young men at the camp, Franz, was causing trouble. Franz was very talented. He could draw, sing, play the guitar, and speak in public. However, he was self-centered and sarcastic. He told off-color jokes, sang ungodly music, and was quite a bad influence with the other campers. The camp staff met together, trying to decide what to do about Franz. How they wished they had not accepted him as a camper. The artist didn't say anything, but he started doing something. He began sitting near Franz at mealtime, and talking to him in a friendly way. Sometimes he would lay his hand on Franz's shoulders, and he often smiled at the boy. One day the artist said, Franz, I want to sketch your portrait before the week is over. Franz glowed with pleasure at being singled out for such an honor. As the artist began to draw, many of the campers and staff hovered around, watching. It looks just like him, someone said. Yes, another agreed. You can sure tell that that is Franz. On Friday afternoon, the artist finished his sketch and held it up so all could see. It's Franz, all right, someone said. But that isn't all. Several voices cried out, it's the face of Christ. Sure enough, the artist had drawn Franz in such a way that his eyes shone with compassion. The noble forehead arched above a thoughtful face. The mouth seemed tender but disciplined. Oh, a person cries. It looked like Franz will look in 20 years if... The look on Franz's face showed that he already understood what was meant by that if. The new sketch was hung on the wall. Everyone enjoyed it, but soon they noticed something. Franz had become the kindest and most helpful young man in the camp. Instead of demanding that others serve him, he began helping others. He had seen himself in the face of Christ, and it had changed his life. The artist could have scolded Franz, right? He could mm -hmm. have ignored him, but what did he do instead? He helped him. He helped him, that's right. He actually showed him Jesus. Yes. When you help someone, you can show them Jesus, right? If you see a little speck in you, in their eyes, you might have more specks in yours, right? You might have a whole plank in your eyes. But showing someone Jesus is helping them remove the sin. Just like you said, I'm going to help you move the speck from the little smudge from your face. And you said, oh, and I will help you remove all the specks and all the dirt off your face. 
This is how Christians should be living. This is what Jesus is calling us to do. He doesn't want us to be hypocritical, which means he doesn't want us to do one thing and say another, right? He doesn't want us to point fingers at other people. What he wants us to do is he wants us to help each other see Jesus. Mm -hmm. Just like the artist helped Franz, not by criticism. Do you know anyone who has changed because they were criticized? No. No. A lot of times people don't change when they're criticized. They changed when they're offered help, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of criticizing, why don't we offer help to other people? Why can't we show Jesus to them? And then they will show Jesus to us, right? They will help us to see our own problems, see our own sins, see our own misdoings, right? Yes. So it is very important to help someone and not criticize, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for joining for our lesson today. I, we hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next week. That was a great lesson. I hope you learned a lot. Now let's go on to the rest of our Sabbath school. Favorite artist is Toby Mac. My favorite Pathfinder honor is Pineward Derby. My favorite place I've been is Hoover Dam in Arizona. A chore I do not like to do, it would be to practice music. 
and I won't do anything that consists of dangerous power tools. Something that I'm good at is driving RCs. My dream pet is my cat, Sally. My favorite YouTuber is RC Spark Studio. My favorite video game is FS19 or Farming Simulator 19. And my favorite scripture is the whole Bible. Let's bow our heads. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given to us. I hope this week goes well, and thank you for the lesson. Please help us not to be judgmental of others. In Jesus' name, amen.